Well, good morning. Happy Thanksgiving 2022, November 24th, 2022. My name is Robert Jr., Robert Evans Jr. I'm the Take and Sober Guy on YouTube channel. Coming to you from uh, the office of Cornerstone Restoration Ministries, Cornerstone Contractors. And I just want to bring a message of hope and thanksgiving and praise and gratitude and all that to let y'all know that today is the day for Thanksgiving. So I thank God that five years, two months, and a few days ago, uh, on September 22nd, 2017, that he gave me the strength and courage to, you know, with that one choice to stop the insanity that was recklessly controlling my life for 35 years. And uh, one day at a time since then, it's been getting better. Five years, two months, and a couple days. So anyway, I uh, hope that y'all are with family and you're enjoying the uh, Thanksgiving festivities and all of that that comes with it. I'm getting ready to go and eat some stuff myself like I really need to. <laughs> but anyway, let's dip, dip right into it, shall we? All right, Proverbs 24. Let's see. Yeah, let's, uh, Proverbs 24, verse 1 through about 7. Do not envy wicked men, do not desire their company, for their hearts plot violence, and their lips talk about making trouble. By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. A wise man has great power, and a man of knowledge increases strength. For waging war, you need guidance, and for victory, many advisors. Wisdom is too high for a fool. In the assembly at the gate, he has nothing to say. He who plots evil will be known as a schemer. That was me. That was my external identity five years, two months, and a few days ago. I was a schemer. I was a drunk. I was a you know, drug addict. I was a good-for-nothing nobody that had no hope and no friends and just no, no will for life because I was hopeless. And I'm sure there's people out there that feel the same way. And I want you to know something, that if God can help me through that hopelessness, despair, that mental anguish that I was putting myself through with the help of the devil and the captivity of addiction, if God can care enough about me to look down when I raise my hand up and grab my hand and say, I've got you, son, if God can do that for me, he can do that for you, and he will. It just takes one choice, one choice to do something different. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about the next hour. Worry about that one choice and then earnestly pray to God. Say, Lord, I need your help. God, lead, lead God and direct my steps and he will do that. One other thing, uh, wisdom for the way, Charles Swindoll. Let God build your house. Psalms 127 verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Here's the idea. During those all-important early months and years of marriage, make sure that the Lord your God is the heart and center of your family. If he is not, the whole experience is a study in futility. A wasted, empty, counterproductive effort. It will all be in vain. He doesn't have in mind a home that hangs a lot of religious mottos or the walls on the walls or a couple that simply goes to church regularly or offers up a quick prayer before meals or places a big Bible on the living room coffee table. No, no, no. The essential ingredient is the Lord Jesus Christ. A family gets started on the right foot when Jesus Christ is in each life. Husband and wife are both born again. You know, you, you don't need to be with unbelievers. You know, do not, it says in the Bible, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And when the lengthening shadow of his lordship perver pervades that relationship, when a couple makes Christ a vital part of their life, in the terms of the psalm, that's, that's when the Lord builds the house. 
So I'm going to apply that to my life and have been. I'm letting go and let God have total control. Um, I want to marry my soulmate soon, but not in my time, but in God's time. And, um, you know, I just want to say that I am thankful, grateful, and blessed today that he allowed me to meet, finally meet my soulmate, S-O-L-E-M-A-T-E, soul mate, not S-O-U-L mate, soul mate. God is my soul mate. He saved my soul. I'm talking about soul mate, S-O-L-E-M-A-T-E. -E. But anyway, I hope you find any some encouragement from what I uh, have said today. And it's not about me, it's about what God does through me. And uh, always remember, God is our cause for joy in the midst of despair. And I will say, if God allowed the struggles, he will see you through them. I promise you. Isaiah 40, 31, I'll leave you with this. It says, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Always remember that, you know, everything that happens for a reason in life, and it's like when we finally arrive at the place where God wants us to be, we will see how our past prepared us for what God wanted for us all along. Letting go of the past involves looking to the future in a new way. We need to learn to be satisfied by being in God's will. The more we focus on who we are in Christ today, the less it matters who we were in the past. Y'all have a great day. Enjoy your family. Uh, have it a uh, you know a day of Thanksgiving. Thank you know thank God for the smallest little things to the biggest things that you could imagine that you know you have or whatever. But um, start with just thanking him for waking up this morning, giving us breath, giving us life, and giving us a fresh hope that with him, all things are possible. Y'all have a blessed day. Happy Thanksgiving 2022. Taking Sober Guy is always saying, he is greater than I or you. Y'all have a blessed day. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me.